Hello, welcome to day five, your first musical genre focus, the blues. Blues are responsible for grandfathering many different genres, including my personal favorite, metal and hard rock, heavily founded in blues, okay? You can find it on massive stages, all the way to backyards, garages, open mics, you name it. Why? Because it's so accessible. You really don't need a lot of flair when it comes to playing the blues. Now, that's not to say that it's all simple, but for the most part, three or four chords can take you so far, and it's so easy to be able to start to communicate with other guitarists when you speak blues and when you speak that style of playing, especially when you get together with friends for the first time. It's one of the most easiest ways to start riffing around with is just playing blues because it's very specific and straightforward. So today we're gonna to focus on this genre. I'm gonna give you a song that's got two different parts, okay? One, that's gonna be a 12 bar or 12 measure song. It's gonna focus on you playing more lead guitar style, okay? And then I'm gonna give you a second 12 bar or 12 measure song. It's gonna focus on playing more rhythm guitar. And you can overlay these two if you like. And we're gonna give you a pro tip when you do this as well. By the end of today, I'm gonna to teach you both, both parts of that song. I want you to try to do your best to find a way once you get comfortable to pick a speed that feels good, record yourself playing it once, okay? And then I want you to go back and listen to that recording and play with yourself with the opposite side. So if you play the rhythm side and record yourself, play the lead side over top of that with your own rhythm and start working through how to, to find natural ways to play lead and natural ways to play rhythm. You don't have to make a decision on what you're going to play, okay? But this is gonna be enough of an introduction that it'll start you to have that kind of focus and understanding of what does lead playing feel like versus what does rhythm playing feel like. Also today, I'm gonna to introduce you to one new chord. It's gonna live one chord today, a B7 chord. It's gonna be your first chord using all four of your fretting fingers, okay? So be ready for that. But I will also give you a bit of a cheater with the B7 to be able to use three fingers to get started. That way you can build your way up and you won't get blocked in the uh, exercises that we have for today. So let's get going. All right, so we're gonna jump right into showing you the first passage of your new practice song today. It's gonna to focus more on the lead part, okay? So you're gonna have more single fretted notes and open strings than you will chords, all right? The, the chords and such will come in the next song, so that's gonna be specifically there. There is gonna be one chord shape that we're gonna be playing through this, though. I'll make a call out later when I'm actually walking you through playing the song, okay? But if you think back to day one, remember the introduction to position playing, okay? Today, we're going to be playing in the first position. So this is the only area of the fretboard you're going to be in and on down through all the strings, okay? So this is the place we're going to stay today. So let me demonstrate this song to you quickly. I'll, I'll play it kind of slowly for you, okay? Let's get walking through the song. All right, so let's introduce you to the first four of 12 bars for this song, okay? Um, these are going to be played as singular notes, okay? They're gonna be quarter notes. And if you remember, four quarter notes go into one bar or one measure, right? So we're gonna play four bars of four quarter notes of the same thing. So each bar is going to repeat itself for these first four bars, okay? So let's uh, let's take a look. So we're gonna be dealing with all of our strings basically through, through this song, um, as you'll see through the two different progressions, okay? So to get you started, we're gonna play a open on your sixth string, okay? And then we're going to remember the position play, we're gonna stay in the first position, right? So your second fret is gonna be your second finger. Okay, and that's mostly what we're gonna play throughout the majority of these. Most of the, the single note changes are gonna be on your, your second fret here throughout your different strings, okay? So open six, second fret on five, open four, okay? And then second fret on four. So play that with me. Open six, second fret on five, open four, second fret on four. Okay, four measures of that, just like we did. 
Now, we'll move on. The next is two bars that are going to be repeated, okay? So two measures that we are going to repeat. And we're going to bump up to the same kind of pattern, but we're going to start on the fifth string instead of your sixth string, okay? So it's going to look something like this. We're going to go five open, so fourth string, second fret, three open, second fret on the third string. Okay, so that's two bars worth. Okay, and then the next two bars, we're gonna repeat, repeat <laughs> the previous line. We're gonna go open six, second fret on five, open four, second fret on four. Okay, so those next four bars or measures are gonna play something like this, okay? Okay, so that's eight out of 12 bars so far. Not that bad, right? All right, so let's move on. Now we're going to encounter that new chord I was telling you about, a B7, okay? Now I'm gonna show you this three finger fretting method for this to get us started here. And then on the next set of the song, I'll, I'll show you what the alternate is if you wanna play the full chord, the full four fingered version of this chord, okay? But we're gonna start um, just briefly on the fifth string. You're gonna be a second fret with your second finger, okay? So fifth string, second fret, second finger, fourth string, first fret, first finger, third string, ring finger, your third finger on the second fret, and then your second string is gonna be played open. You're not going to be playing your sixth string or your first string, okay? So that chord goes something like that, okay? Now, here's the interesting part. When playing this lead song, I don't want you to strum this like a chord. Every other chord we've done so far, we've played the chord like that with all the strings at the same time. What I want to do is arpeggiate this. And what basically this means is we're going to play out quarter notes of each one of the strings in that chord position without strumming the whole chord. So instead of this, we're gonna go, Okay, so your ninth bar or ninth measure is going to be this, okay? And then the 10th bar, right? Is going to be five open, four, second fret, fourth, fourth string, third string open, second fret on the third string. You know that, we've played that already, right? And then you're going to go Sixth string open, second fret on the fifth string, four open, second fret on the fourth string, and then one more time for the last bar, we're gonna go back to that arpeggiated version of that B7. Okay, so let's do that one more time. Those last four bars, let's play that. So there you go. There's your first song, the first lead part of this song. Now we're going to get into looking at the rhythm side of the same song to complement this. Now on to our second song of the day, another 12 bar, this time rhythm guitar. So as you remember from the first song I've shown you, that was more lead focused, right? It had leading notes that we were playing. Well, this 12 bar with rhythm guitar is going to be mainly filling in with measures of quarter notes, strumming chords, okay? And those chords are going to complement those leading single notes that are played through the, the lead version of that. Um, one thing I wanna note, think back to the day before when we talked about scales, right? And we walked the scale through different whole notes to eventually reach the point between the two chords that we wanted to play. 
This is a really, really similar exercise that we're doing here, okay? These, uh, these chords and notes weren't just picked at random. They completely complement each other because the singular notes that are played through the, the lead with those leading notes uh, in, infer what chords are going to be played along with that. Okay, so think about the area we were in and then think about the chords we're going to be playing. So I'm going to introduce you to the song and what we're going to play, and I'll tell you the chords that we're going to hit in the process. Okay, so let's take a look at the first four bars of the song. Again, 12-bar song, first four bars, four measures, okay, are all going to be quarter notes. We're going to strum the same chords for the entirety of those four measures, okay? And that's going to be an E major. Remember your E major? Okay, so that's an E major. We're going to strum that for four bars. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Okay, so far easy, right? We can do that. Now, we're going to have the switch up and think about how it went. In the other lead song that I introduced you to earlier, right, you had two bars and two bars in the middle here where we switched up, right, those, those notes and where you were playing. We're going to do the same thing here with different chords. The next two bars is going to be an A major. Okay, so for two bars, we're going to play that. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. And then for the next two bars, we're going to return back to our E major. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. Cool. That's two thirds of the song done. Okay. Just transitioning between E major and A major. Now, we're going to take a look at that B7. All right. So I introduced you to the arpeggiated version of this earlier. Uh, and then I started to show you what the, the kind of cheater was, right, of that uh, chord as well, where you only played with three fingers of your fretting fingers and not four, okay, which was like that. Well, if we want to, this is the, the added version. You can do this if you like. Uh, what I'm showing you this song, I'm actually not going to play it this way for you. I want you to be able to take away the easier version first, and then you can step up to this challenge. But to play the full chord with all four fingers, the last remaining finger you're going to do is take your pinky, your fourth finger, put it on the second fret of the first string, your high E string, okay? And you're going to let the, the string in the middle, the second string, okay, this is going to ring out. You start by only strumming down from your fifth string down, okay? That's the full chord. And then here's the cheater version. Pretty close, right? It just doesn't have that last little ring out. So that's what I want you to do. I want you to work up to being able to play this, okay? Now, for the sakes of the song, right, for this ninth bar, you're going to be playing this chord, one measure, four quarter notes. Okay? And then you're going to move to an A major for bar 10. Bar 11 is an E major. Followed by bar 12, which is going to be that new chord, that, that B7 again. Okay? So, let's run through this together really quick. All right, so here we go. I'm going to count this off for you, okay? I'm going to do a full measure count, and then we're going to start. One, two, three, E major. One, two, three. And there you go. So you're going to play this uh, once all the way through, okay? And when you hit the end, you can feel free, if you like, instead of the four strums at the, at the last 12 measure, you can also let that ring open, okay? 
two, three, four. Your call, however you'd like to mix it up as you're playing with the lead. But that's the song, that's your second song. Now you have a complimentary rhythm guitar version of that song to go with the lead and you can start riffing on it any way you want throughout your practice. All right, that is the end of our session on your introduction to the blues style. Practice the new chord I gave you, go through those couple of different variations of it, definitely start to really work on that rhythm and lead, feel out how those two work, and you can start to explore other notes that you'd like to throw in there as well. You'll, you'll be able to tell when they conflict and they don't work, okay? So stick to your scale, right? And start working through your scale. So, so far you know the C major scale, start looking up other scales and look at how they, they operate. They're going to work identically just about for all of them, okay? You just have to unlock the scale, understand what notes you're going to be able to use within that scale, and start replacing and playing as you go. This is a great introduction for that. I hope that really helps you to be able to do that. Next, next session, okay? So tomorrow, we're gonna go through an introduction to campfire style playing. Can't wait to do that, it's a lot of fun. It's definitely one that's just fun to noodle on, especially if you're just sitting around like listening to the radio, watching TV, doing something like that and practicing. You can just strum around with, with this style and it's really good for just a casual playing, okay? So as always, great work. Super proud of all the uh, achievements you've done today. This is fantastic. Hope you're having a good time. Hope to see you at the next session. Bye.